I'm Pastor George Borkhardt, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. It's not the gospel's fault. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, which we're a group that's all about passing the faith on to the next generation. We resource parents, and pastors, and youth to live their faith in the next, to live their faith in their lives. Um, if you're if you're for this too, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get the app. Our app is on iTunes, it's on Google Play, it's on Amazon, it's on on Roku and Apple TV. And donate. Go to support.higherthings.org and donate today. Your tax deductible gift helps us to give this gospel to young people, and they need this gospel in these dark times. So, Brenda last week <clears throat> gave a little bit of a uh, concern uh, that, yes, yes, it's all grace, but we got to watch that people don't live in their sin. Can't preach the gospel in such a way as they live in sin. Um, and I sort of picked on her a little bit uh, privately, but um, uh, behind that question is something that is both helpful and unhelpful. Um, a few times in the scripture, two, if you count Romans 6, three, if you count, shall we sin more that grace may abound? Four, um, the concern about freedom being used to sin is mentioned. Don't use your freedom as a veil for sin. That's First Peter 2. Um, uh, don't use your freedom as a license to sin. That's Galatians 5. Um, Paul says here, we sin more that grace may abound. No, because you're baptized. None of that is because of the gospel. That is all because of sinful men. The gospel should be preached in its purity. It should be 100%, salvation should be delivered to you as 100% free, without any merit or worthiness in you. No buts, no don'ts, no yeah, buts. None of that. None of that. None of that. Because the gospel isn't the problem. We are the problem. What I mean by that is Jesus did this all for you and gives it to you as a gift is not the reason why people sin. They sin because they're slaves to sin. And when they sin, having been rescued from Jesus, it's not because Christ is a minister, a minister of sin. No, it's because they have fallen back into sin. Okay, so don't pull back on the gospel. Don't change the gospel. Don't tweak it. Don't make it less free. Uh, don't pull back on it because you lose your salvation then. Only the 100% unadulterated, pure octane, um, 360 proof gospel is capable of saving sinners like us who would turn this gospel into license to sin. So um, when we, we have to properly divide law and gospel, when we are tempted to use the gospel, and it's not the gospel's fault, to sin, we need to hear the law again that such people who do such things uh, don't go to heaven. But that's not the fault of the gospel. That you have to swing back and preach the law is the life of a Christian who goes from forgiveness to repentance, repentance to forgiveness, repentance, re forgiveness, forgiveness, repentance. Back and forth we go as we die to live for God. And so when you try to articulate your, your problem, um, and this goes for everyone, um, that you're afraid that the gospel might be too free. First, look at yourself. Don't look at others. We always are afraid that someone else may take the gospel in vain. And we never look at ourselves. First, look at yourself and see that all you do is sinful, even after you hear the gospel, and that you, that you want to live in the prison of death and sin. That'll give you something else to repent of so that more gospel can be poured in. But understand that only the pure gospel and not the law, only the pure gospel, only Jesus alone saves me, will enliven you to live a holy life here in time and hereafter in eternity. The law can instruct you on how to live. The law can curb your behavior. The law can show you how, you, how your sin is, how you shouldn't use the idea that you're forgiven as a license to sin. But it is unable to enliven you to live a holy life. Only the gospel can do that. A good tree bears good fruit and a bad tree bears bad fruit. And I'm not saying that you don't need the law in your life. You do need the law in your life. How else will you learn to love and serve your neighbor? How else will you learn um, what a God-pleasing work is? 
Uh, but the gospel has freed you from the condemnation of the law unless you want to leave the gospel to go back to the law, which is what we do when we want to live in our sins. You, freedom in the gospel is freedom from sin, freedom from the need to sin, freedom from the requirement, freedom from even the question, shall we sin more that grace may abound? The answer is, heck no. Because I've been baptized, because I've been saved, I don't have to sin anymore. I don't have to sin. I don't, I'm not a slave to my sins anymore. I am a slave of righteousness. I'm a slave of forgiveness. I'm a slave of the mercy of God. I'm free now to live and love as, I, as God always intended it. So when you're trying to articulate, ah, that gospel was so sweet that I think someone could use that to sin, first, you should change it to, I could use that to sin. And not because of the gospel, but because I'm a slave to sin. So the, the, the problem to address is my slavery to sin, my desire to, that I, to live in my sins, that I need to hear the law again. I'm not ready for the gospel because the gospel is the only thing that's going to enliven me, forgive me, and give me a life free from sin, the condemnation of sin, the free from the need to sin, the free from the requirement to sin. I hope that helps out Brenda and all you others who are like, that gospel that you preach is so, so wonderful. Other people could sin. You mean you? Well, well, yeah. Well, that's not the fault of the gospel. That's the fault of you. And you need the law. I'm Pastor George Borkhart. And this has been another Higher Things video short. <laughs>